Hello again kids, this is lesson 39 of the 4th grade Excel and we're going to be learning a lot about geometry today and this is going to be a long and very challenging lesson. You need to be patient, you need to stick with it all the way through because this is going to be stuff that you're going to see over and over again. We're going to learn some terms, some words that have to do with geometry and learn exactly what those mean. First of all, a polygon is a plane figure, that means a flat shape made up of three or more straight lines and it also has to be closed and so this shape is a polygon because it has four sides and it's closed and that's a polygon that's a polygon that's a polygon this is not a polygon because it has a curved side on it this is not a polygon because there's an opening right here and a quadrilateral is a polygon it's one of these it has exactly four sides. So just think of like a triangle has three sides, a quadrilateral has four sides. All of the pictures in the sh uh, these, all these shapes here in this picture are all quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral that a lot of kids don't recognize is this one right here also. So remember that is a quadrilateral because it has one, two, three, four sides on it does not have to look like a rectangle or something to be a quadrilateral as long as it has four sides and then a parallelogram is a quadrilateral it's one of these where the opposite sides are parallel so this is a parallel because that side and that side are parallel to each other and this side and this side are parallel so that makes that a parallelogram this side is parallel to this side this side is parallel to that side, so that's a parallelogram. This side is parallel to that side, and that side is parallel to that side, so that's a parallelogram. This shape right here is not a parallelogram. This side is parallel to that side, that's good, but this side is not parallel to that side. You see, those would come down here and meet about right there, so that's not a parallelogram. How about this shape right here? Do you think that's a parallelogram? Well, this side here, the bottom and the top, are parallel to each other. They would just keep going without intersecting. But the left side and the right side are not parallel. They would come up and meet somewhere about right in there. And so that's not a parallelogram. When you mark these shapes, what you want to do, and this is a reminder, it's something that kids always need help on, and that is you do not put the letter P on any of your polygons, simply cross out any shapes that are not polygons. So when you see one of those problems that has a whole bunch of shapes all over like this, just go through and any shape that's not a polygon, cross it out, and then count all the other shapes. That's not a, I'll count all the other shapes and put that number next to where it says polygons. On the quadrilaterals, put the letter Q on anything that's a quadrilateral. On the parallelograms, put the letters LL on any shape that's a parallelogram and when you reach consensus on these you have to make sure that all the marks on every single shape are exactly the same because if one person say marks uh, this shape right here you see where I'm marking there if they mark that as a parallelogram the other person doesn't well the person that marked that as a parallelogram doesn't understand what a parallelogram is they need to be talking to that other person and explaining to them that a parallelogram has to have four sides that has six sides. Or let's say somebody crosses this one out saying that's not a polygon. Well, a triangle is a polygon. It has to have three or more straight sides. So all the marks on all the shapes have to be matched up perfectly. All right, the next thing we're going to learn about is uh, what we call diagonals. Diagonals are lines, invisible lines, that go through the middle of a shape and connect the corners. On a triangle, there is no line. there are no lines that can go through the middle and connect the corners. I connect these two corners, that's the edge. If I connect those two corners, that's the edge. These, they're already connected because that is the shape, so that has zero diagonals. On this shape here, it looks like kind of an arrow. Uh, this corner here can be connected down to that corner there, so we have one diagonal. If I connect these two corners, it goes on the outside of the shape, and that does not count as a diagonal. On this square, I've got two diagonals. I've got one that connects these two corners, and one that connects those two corners. These are very, very hard problems to get the exact right answer on. 
So do your very best on, on these. We're going to do number four together. I'm going to show you the method that I use to get the correct answer. I'm going to start up here at the top, and I'm going to think of where can I go from that vertex to any other vertices that can make a straight line. So I'm going to kind of pretend like this is a sprinkler right here, and it's spraying out across this kind of grass area, and I'm going to look for places where I can connect to another line like with a string. Going to here, that's not a vertex, I mean that's not a diagonal because that's actually the edge of the shape. But as I work my way around, I can see I can connect to that vertex right there, so that's one. And then I work my way around, here's another one that I can connect to, that's two diagonals. And then the third diagonal over there is uh, not a diagonal because I, that's the edge of the shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write how many I went to from there, how many new corners I was able to connect to. I'm going to work my way around the shape. I'm going to go to the next corner, and I'm going to, again, kind of spray around the shape like this, looking for places where I can connect. The first place I can connect is straight across, and the second one is straight down there. So I've got two diagonals, that new diagonals from that corner. Then I come down to the next corner down here at the bottom, and I spray around through the shape, and this first one is already connected. So that's not a new diagonal. That diagonal is already there but I can come over to this one right there and that counts as one new diagonal. Then I go to this corner over here and I see that I've already got these two connected and those two connected so there are no new diagonals. And then to this last corner, that one's already connected and that one's already connected, no new diagonals. And then all I have to do is add up my single digit numbers there, two, two, and one, that makes five diagonals on that shape. And that's just a coincidence that there are five diagonals and the shape is a pentagon with five sides. All right, do number five. I'm going to get you started on this and then I want you to continue and get all the answers. Let's start in this corner here. Everybody kind of remember the sprinkler thing. Start over on one side, maybe over in this area, and think where can I connect to? Okay, right there. And then I can connect to there. See the sprinkler's kind of working its way across. So I've got three other corners that I can connect to there. Now go to this corner here and keep doing that all the way around the shape and see how many diagonals you come up with. Pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready to see the solutions there. So on this one here, I can connect to this corner, I can connect to that corner, and I can connect to that corner. Always going in a real logical, organized way. And then I'm going to go to this corner. This corner is already connected there but go around, you know, just like work your way across. That one I can do, and then down here. So I've got two new diagonals because this one was already connected. Then I can come down to this corner here. These two are already connected. Those two are already connected, but that one's not connected. And I go to one, and then this corner, all the diagonals, the three across from there, have already been connected and same thing with this last one one two three already connected so there's no new diagonals so all I have to do is add three three two and one that gives me a total of nine diagonals and you can see there's kind of a pattern here look two two one zero zero this one was three three two one zero zero see if you can kind of use that pattern uh, and help yourself to I mean, if there is no pattern, then you're probably doing something wrong. Try number six by yourself. Pause the video. Turn it back on when you're ready for the solutions. Okay, so you can start anywhere, but I'm going to start right up in this corner here, and I'm going to use this spraying across the lawn area there with my sprinkler. And notice I just made four lines. Then come down to this one. Work your way across. One, two, three, four four there, and then I come down to this one. This one's already connected, but then I've got two, three, and four. There's always going to be four, but I've already got one connected, right? So that's three, and then on this one I've got that connected already. I've already got that one connected, so that one's not done yet, and neither is that one. That's two, and then here I've got one connected, two already connected, three already connected. This one's the only one not connected. So I have one, and then these are all connected here. So zero, and the same thing with this last corner, zero. Add them all together, I got four and four is eight, plus three is eleven. 
12, 13, and 14. Let's see if I got those right. Yep, there they are. Done a little bit more neatly. You can see all the diagonals on these shapes. Pretty tricky. All right, this last one, we talked about this on the last lesson and how challenging it is to find parallel diagonals, perpendicular lines. So you need to know the difference between these the parallel lines, diagonal lines, and perpendicular. Okay, different sets of parallel lines. First, they identified AB. That goes from here over to here. Doo -doo. Along there, that's A, B, and C, D. Goes along this way. Those two line segments there and there are perpendicular to each other. Now there are another set of parallel, did I say perpendicular? I meant parallel. There, there's another set of parallel lines that are on that drawing, and I want you to try to write them. The two sides are going to go here and here. Don't forget to put the little symbol above your letters too. So go ahead and fill in this spot and this spot. Pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. All right, the other place that's parallel, you have AD right there. So you should have written AD. If you wrote DA, that's fine. Doesn't make any difference. And then BC, you should have written BC right there. Also, or CB, you could switch those because BC is parallel to AD. Either way around, it's like being equal to each other. All right, I'm going to get this cleared off here. And there it goes. So now it's going to be your job to do all of the diagonals. So you have two line segments that are diagonals, a line here and a line here. They're not diagonal to each other. They're diagonals like we just learned in those last shapes where we drew lines through the middle of them. So write down what the two li diagonal line segments are that are in that drawing. Pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. All right, so we have one here that goes down through the middle of the shape. That would be AC with a segment symbol across the top, or you could put CA. The other one's right here. That would be DB with a se segment symbol on the top of that DB or BD. And then we have perpendicular, which uh, l segments on this drawing are perpendicular. AB, it says. And I always want you to trace these. When you do this on your work, trace over with your pencil and show me that they're actually, you know, prove to me what your thinking is. And BC, BC is this way. And so you've got AB and BC being perpendicular. So believe it or not, there are three other sets of perpendicular line segments that you try to find. This is one of the hardest things for kids. See if you can do it. You can have a set right here, here and here, these go together, and then these two go together as perpendicular segments, and then here and here go together as perpendicular segments. So you got three more sets. See if you can find those. You got here and the, there, that's perpendicular, but you have three other pairs of perpendicular line segments. Pause the video, turn it back on when you're ready for the solutions. So we did A and B and B and C, now let's just work our way around. We got B and C is perpendicular to C and D. So you do B, C, perpendicular to D, C. And the order on this doesn't matter at all. And then keep working your way around. You got D, C down here at the bottom. It's perpendicular to A, D. So D, C, don't forget your segment symbols across the top. It's perpendicular to A, D. And then the last one is A, D here on the side perpendicular to the one on the top, AB. So you do DA or AD is perpendicular to AB. All right, those are tricky. This last little diagram here, you are going to write yes or no, and all you have to do is write the letter Y or the letter N on each one of these shapes. So like this first one, is that a polygon? Yes. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes, because it has four sides. Is it a parallelogram? No, because this is parallel, but that's not parallel. So you write no or N. Is it a rectangle? No, it does not have four right angles. So that's no, and it's not a square. A square is a square. If it looks like a square, it's a square. The tricky one is the rectangle, because squares can be rectangles. So pause the video, fill in the rest of the chart, turn it back on, you're in, you're ready to see the solutions there. All right, so... For this next shape here, is that a polygon? Yes, it's a polygon. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes, because it has four sides. Is it a parallelogram? 
Parallel that way, parallel that way. Yes, it's a parallelogram. Is it a rectangle? Yes, it is, because it has four right angles in the corners. Is it a square? Yes, it is. A square is a square. Is this next one a polygon? Well, that's pretty tricky. Some of you might have said no, but the answer is yes. There's no curves on there. Is it a quadrilateral? No. One, two, three, four, five. There's actually five sides on there, which means it can't be a parallelogram, it can't be a rectangle, and it can't be a square. because It has to be a quadrilateral to be any of these. These are three different types of quadrilaterals. This next one, is that a polygon? Yes. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes. It's got four sides. Is it a parallelogram? Actually, it is, because that's parallel, and those two sides right there are parallel, so the answer is yes. Is it a rectangle? No, we don't have four right angles in the corners. And is it a square? No, it's not a square. All right, the last one down here, is that a polygon? Yes. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes, four sides. Is it a parallelogram? Parallel? Parallel. Yes, it is a parallelogram. Is it a rectangle? Yes, it makes a shape with four right angles in the corners. Rectangle, right angle. That's how you remember that. Right angle. It's got four right angles. So the answer is yes, but it's not a square because a square has to have four congruent sides.